Hey everyone, this video is about base design and more specifically shaft design. One of the first things you have to decide when starting your base is how large your shaft is going to be and how many you plan to have. This determines how your piping, airflow, and the rest of your base structure will look. As you may have noticed, I use a single wide shaft design in the center of my base. This simplifies pathing and combined with some airflow and mesh tiles in the middle of the blocks, provides great airflow and ensures all unwanted gases will pool at the bottom of the base where they can be filtered or spaced. This entire base is enclosed in an insulated box with the only way out of the box being a transit tube behind the only atmosphere dock in the entire base. This allows for perfect seals at the top and the bottom of the base which can't be compromised by random liquids flowing into it like liquid locks. I'm a big advocate of this method. While it is quite power intensive, it is definitely worth it. Keeping the base in an insulated box also allows for relatively easy temperature regulation by cooling the O2 being pumped into the base. Over here we have our ATSTs cooling the O2 directly with nectar so it's coming out at minus 60 degrees. The shaft I use is seven tiles wide, including the mesh tile tips at the edges of most blocks. These ledges allow for easy addition of deodorizers straight up and down the central column or other air related plants such as aloe vera or buddy bud. The entire base functions as a drain and usually there's a liquid sump pit at the bottom as well, which then filters out desired liquids into the appropriate tanks. This game, however, is on a blasted series, a max difficulty. And since most liquids, since this is colder than the normal series on average, most liquids tend to freeze immediately and that part of the design was not necessary in this run. When the shaft goes above and below the tube choke points, it shrinks down to being essentially five wide, although it is still technically seven wide, including the pipes that go up and down in, in the columns. This width was chosen, uh, it, this width is essentially the maximum easily constructible width that you can have in a base because you can have, you know, one gap between your ladder and your fire pole that they can jump and then they can reach two tiles to the outer edges. So if you're running your ladder and your fire pole up and down, this is the furthest apart that the outer walls and pipes can be without constructing extra scaffolding. That makes this shaft very easy and quick to construct as I just run the ladder and fire poles down and then I can run the outer walls and pipes down later. This goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the base. And down here in the magma, we have uh, heavy insulation on the sides to ensure that the thousand degree steam magma and whatnot that's on the edges here doesn't get in the middle here and melt the, the plastic tube. That's something you need to be careful about. Real quick, I want to compare this to some other basic uh, shaft designs that you've probably seen. The seven tile shaft is the widest shaft that you can essentially construct and provides a lot of room for running uh, pipes straight up and down the middle. So if we look here at some other basic shafts, this is something you've probably seen really relatively common in, in um, this one and this one having either the ladder and the plier pole on the like with a space between or having them next to each other. This design is a bad design. This, this design is not good because when you run a transit tube down the middle, you need to make the station somewhere. And when it's down the middle, it means that when you put the station, you have to run the transit tube past the fire pole, the ladder. Now, while dupes can cross this, it slows them down. And a lot of base design is trying to make your dupes travel time as quick as possible and, and reduce transit times as much as possible. So this is the improved version of this where you have the transit tube on one side or the other so that the, the transit tube access can easily be put to a side while still running the pipe straight up and down. Quick word on uh, actual piping. You may have noticed, if you've been playing a lot of Oni, that if you're running pipes side by side, it becomes difficult to cross with another pipe. 
when you were when you have them this close to each other you have to dismantle one create a bridge and then run another one through that as you can't you know do a double bridge back to back here this means temporarily stopping the flow on one pipe potentially you having to use an empty pipe command or some other crap that's just going to slow you down and is just overall not worth it adding a single gap remedies the problem somewhat but requires you to stagger your pipes when something crosses which can make things very messy once a lot more pipes start getting added in the sweet spot in my experience is having two gaps between your pipes always no matter which direction they're going and this allows you to smoothly cross any number of pipes with a double bridge without having to do any shenanigans like this and it'll and if you keep the crosses two gaps wide uh, apart as well then you can also run other pipes or uh, you know cross through this in the late game once you know you're not going to be adding that many more pipes and you're less worried about cluttering your pi your pipe infrastructure because it's only one or two pipes left that need to be run before you're done this over here is the five tile wide shaft and it's essentially the basic uh component of my sh uh, of my shaft you can still run pipes up and down through the walls here um but as i said uh when looking at the the live game these mesh tiles wind up being very very useful for adding random deodorizers aloe vera buddy buds you know whatever um, I've even put wood heaters on them before they're just incredibly useful useful for utility and it also keeps your pipes outside of your uh, outside of the actual blocks themselves which means you can run other things behind the doors that are specific to those blocks such as you know cooling pipes this is another look at how the shaft looks once it's above or below the base. And once I've narrowed it down to essentially, you know, the five slash the five interior seven total, which still has the pipes running up and down the walls. Um, usually in my games, I keep my pipes relatively consistent. One thing I realized a long time ago was that as long as you stay under roughly like 30 dupes or so, Virtually every demand in your base can be satisfied by one pipe of that particular liquid other than O2. O2 is the only thing that's going to require multiple pipes. So usually when I'm building my, my base, I always have my O2 on the left. My center pipe for gas would be my chimney. And my right pipe is usually fuel, usually hydrogen that winds up going up to the space command area. For liquid, I put water on the left and... I used to do polluted water in the center and then ethanol on the right, but these have started to vary because the main reason I used to run polluted water all over the place was coolant, and now I've been using nectar more for that and running it more directly. Uh, in my current live game, the middle pipe actually is made of ceramic and runs 200 degree liquid nuclear waste from the nuclear reactor down to the magma biome in order to solidify it. The right pipe um, in that game is ethanol. You can also add more pipes to the sides here. I usually wind up adding them to the right in my live game because on the left I have the bathrooms and everything, so it becomes a bit more complicated, at least for the water. Generally, I will add extra liquid pipes to the right and extra gas pipes to the left because there's more water infrastructure in my base design on the left and more gas infrastructure on the right. But obviously, this is something that you're going to tailor to your specific base design. That's it. That's the video on the seven tile wide shaft, why I highly recommend it and why I will never go back to any other base design. Just having one single massive shaft just streamlines everything, makes your piping extremely clean. And honestly, it looks good as well. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about base design. I stream regularly at Twitch TV SF Hobbit. Thanks for watching.